Good morning, everyone. It's always place to cross on first. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you went through yesterday, no matter what you're going through today. Stay prayed up. Stay calling on the Lord. He helps you. He hears you. You got to remember something that all the old schoolers always say. God is an on-time God. That means it's not your, not when you want it to be or your next door neighbor wanted to be. He's an on-time God according to his time. And you got to remember what the word says. Everything has a season. Everything has a season. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right, another chance to grow as a Christian, another chance to grow in your word, another chance to let your Holy Spirit dwell inside of me, Lord Jesus, another chance to teach your word, another chance to preach your word, spread your word, Lord Jesus. So let's send your Holy Spirit into my heart and my soul and so I can bring forth this word exactly how you want me to bring forth your word so it can bear much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today I'm going to read a, a short snippet from... The Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven that sounds self-explanatory like well so i can teach partial of it now watch read on but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees you shall in no wise, no case, enter into the kingdom of heaven. What was the last thing he said? He said, if your righteousness shall not exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's kind of self-explanatory, right? It sounds self-explanatory. But let's see. Let's get down to the, the fruit of that saying. If you read your word, you read the word of God, you'll realize something. Jesus was always at odds with the Pharisees and the scribes. You understand? So he's trying to tell you straight up, do not be like them. Why? They committed the ultimate blasphemy. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He said, unless your righteousness exceed theirs, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, the Bible tells you so many things. Nobody wants to hear that part. Nobody wants to hear the part, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this and that in your name? And I say, depart from me, you worker in inequity. But he's giving you a model to go by, and he's telling you a model to exceed, right? He said, don't be like the Pharisees and the scribes, uh, the uh, scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Do you understand? Every time Jesus would talk, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had something to say. You understand? They could teach the word, but they couldn't live by it. They didn't understand what it was all about. They was just very judgmental people. If you do the math, read the Bible in regards to the Pharisees and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see all the things that they did and read what first. Think about this now. Paul, first of all, Paul was a Pharisee, right? But when Jesus came, he was no longer a Pharisee anymore. He exceeded his Pharisee mentality. Do you understand? He changed. He changed from how he once was. He changed from persecuting the church and, I mean, persecuting Christ followers to being a Christ follower. So he was no longer really a Pharisee, but he used it in so many ways. I'm a Pharisee too. You understand? I'm a Roman too. He used how he was for a reason. But anyway, as I was saying, if you read the Bible, you'll see so many things and so many mistakes the Pharisees and the Sadducees made. He was trying to tell them, so how can you be, how can you enter into your mother's womb and be born again? They were just so confused, they couldn't understand what even being born again mean. They even called Jesus 
the prince of devils. You understand? He execute. I mean, he exercised demons by demons, by the prince of devils. You understand? And then he was trying to tell them certain things. You understand? And um, he was like, if you were my father, you would know me. All kind of things. You understand? But it's more to it than just that. You see how judgmental they was? They were so quick to point the finger at somebody or point out somebody else's flaws. But you know, the, the prime one of the prime examples I love to give in regards to the word of God, Jesus came to teach forgiveness. He came to forgive sins and he came to teach forgiveness. Do you understand? He said, if you have an art against your brother, he said, if, if you don't forgive your brother or your sister their sins, how will, your, neither will your heavenly father forgive you yours. So what's the word of God is really about? What's Jesus really about? Teaching forgiveness in order to be forgiven. So it's not up to us to condemn anybody. We try to help people, yes. It's not up to us to condemn anybody. What happened with the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery? Jesus forgave her. They was ready to kill her. You understand? That's that Pharisee mentality. They quick to judge and condemn. Why is he sitting with sinners? Why do your disciples eat with unwashed hands? Why do your disciples dishonor the Sabbath? You know, they're all about the doctrine. But they're not, they don't know how to treat people. And that's what's wrong with a lot of Christians this day and age. They know the word of God, but they don't know how to treat people. They don't have no compassion. They don't have no love. That love is Pharisee-like love. And as he said, if your righteousness don't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he's giving you a model not to model yourself after. He said, uh, the Pharisees and all these people like the uppermost seats, like to be seen, like greetings in the marketplace and all these things like that. You know, want to be idols, want people to idolize them and worship them because they know the word. You understand? God doesn't want us to be like that. Can I give you, give you some more testimony again in regards to my life? I got to, because guess what? I was a Pharisee. Sound familiar But I was a Pharisee When Jesus first came into my life When God first came into my life I was reading the word And I was a Pharisee I hated people You know A God that took cigarettes from me Alcohol Everything known to man from me And I considered everybody Who did the things that I once did As an evil person And then God started Opening my eyes To the truth Houston That's not what it's all about and then I started reading about is not what goes into a man to defile a man. And then the more I read, the more I studied, the more I seek God, because I knew something was wrong with how I was. God opened my eyes to how I was. I was Pharisee-like. And I guarantee you, according to the word, if I would have stayed that way, I would have no case entered into the kingdom of heaven being like I was eight years ago. You understand? It's eight years ago. You see, the Bible says a few things. He told you the characteristics of people who are in the church. He said about the, the priest, he said, you can't be a novice. You can't be a rookie. You got to know some things. And so and you do the math in order to know some things, you got to go through some things. You got to be skilled in the word. Not halfway. He said, whoever will sell, teach men least of these commandments. He will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But do the math. You keep being Pharisee like you're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be out of heaven. You're not going to even make it. You understand? Read the word. You can't just read one line and be like, well, most people will read that first line and be like, well, that means it's okay to teach partial of the Bible. No. No. It's not okay. It's not okay. Like, well, he was like the righteousness of the Pharisees. Think about the righteousness of the Pharisees. What did he say in Proverbs or Ecclesiastes? Be not overcome with evil. Why die before your time? Why be overly righteous? Why destroy yourself? Why be overly righteous? Why destroy yourself? Why destroy yourself? Let me say that again. Why destroy yourself for trying to be overly righteous? You got to understand, every time the Bible says righteousness, it doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. 
Now, when he was talking about Job, he was talking about a good righteous. Do you understand? When he's talking about the Pharisees, he's not talking about a good righteousness. Prideful, boastful, proud boasters, all these things, forever learning, never able to come to the truth. You got to understand and read the word to really spread the word. You can't spread it halfway. You understand? You can't spread it halfway. And the thing is, I was reading it and I was spreading it. But I wasn't really understanding it. I was spreading the word, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't really understanding it. I wasn't really grasping the concept of what Jesus did. You understand? Jesus came for us to, to heal the sick and the brokenhearted. You understand? Heal the sick. He could never heal the righteous Pharisees. Why? But they were overly righteous. They felt they knew it all. You couldn't tell them anything. And I've been in that, and sometimes I'm still like that. I can't lie to you. Sometimes nobody can tell me anything. But let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. God said, if you want wisdom, ask for it. Let me here teach you to understand the word. The reason why I've got to a point in my life that I really don't listen to other people as much because I want God to teach me. And you can take it how you want it. You understand? I want to learn how to read the Bible myself. And God is going to teach me how to read the Bible myself. He's going to teach me through the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who's going to teach you all things. You know, because sometimes when you're trying to listen to other people all the time, everybody teaches different. Some people teach it wrong. Some people teach it right. You understand? But you got to be careful of having many teachers. Many teachers. I watched a video about a certain Christian rapper. And he was like, I listened to the, I read so many philosophers and this and that. And then he, he ended the conversation by saying, study to show yourself approved. What is he talking about study to show yourself approved? Really think about it. What is God talking about? What is the Bible talking about when it says study to show yourself approved? What is he talking about studying? Is he talking about studying how to do algebra? Is he talking about studying the works of Sigmund Freud? Is he talking about studying what Einstein thought? Does he talk about studying what philosophers of this world talk about? No, he's talking about studying the word. If he wants you to teach the word, what should you study? The word, not man's doctrine. Not the doctrines of the world, which are a doctrine of devils. God's doctrine. You see, a lot of people will read the word and don't understand what it means. Study to show yourself approved. So that means I can study any book, I can study any religion and be okay with God. I don't think so. The Bible don't think so. He, the, in Revelation, he talks about adding and taking away from the word. And then here it is again. He's talking about it in Matthew chapter 5. About taking away from the word. You understand? Teaching one part and leaving the rest unturned. He talks about this. Jesus talks about this constantly. Whether people want to believe it or not. I posted a video. I don't know if you need to go on my timeline, you can find it. It was about a an evangelical leader, a minister, who repented for not teaching the whole doctrine of Christ. I didn't look for that video, it just popped up. I was like, wow, this is weird. Let me see what he's talking about. But I posted it, you understand? But he said it was a problem with the way he was spreading the word. God name came into his heart and made him repent on live video because he wasn't spreading the word all the way. Why do you think he focused on the commandments? You have to know sin. Everybody teaches the forgiveness of sin, but you got to know sin. If you read the Bible, you got to see, you got to read some of the Old Testament, you'll see what happens with the people who disobeyed God and sin. Even go to David. I love to bring this up. Go to David, a man after God's own heart who made a mistake, and that mistake caused him to have trouble in his household for the rest of his life. A Christian man, a follower of God. A man after God's own heart made a mistake, committed murder. God didn't take his anointing away or the favor away from him. But because of this, 
He went through some things. And I'm just saying, you, you go through some things sometimes for wrongdoing. And sometimes you go through some things because people do you wrong. You understand? If you read the Bible, you'll see that. He said there's a there's a, a evil man when something happens to him in regards to a righteous person. And a righteous person when something happens to him because of an evil person. If you read your Bible, there are different reasons why we go through what we go through. Sometimes we go through things because of evil people. Some things we, sometimes we go through things because of the evil that we do. He said, no, no, not one man is righteous. No, not one. Do you got to understand what he means by that? No man is perfect. No woman is perfect. Houston McCullum Beard ain't perfect. The people you see on TV ain't perfect. One thing about this right here, all you know is what you see right here. You understand? That's all you know. It goes for anybody who's on this screen or doing it. That's all you know. You understand? But the thing is, some people you got to know. And the Bible says you would know them by their fruits. You understand? And unless your fruits exceed the fruits of the Pharisees, do the math. You can put the word. I'm not adding to the word. You can just put it in there. You know what it says. You know you can cross reference the word. He said, study show you as a fruit. Prove. He said, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's, a, that's another way you can understand that God wants you to study the word. He said, rightly dividing the word. What is the word? The gospel. Genesis to Revelation. That's the word of God. You understand? That's the word of God. But I know people were like, well, so you mean to tell me that the Muslims who, uh, they say they worship the one God too. Well, my word says, if they don't believe in Jesus, what God are they worshiping? You understand? You got to understand something, people. There are doctrines of devils out there. You see, the enemy has been trying to manipulate the word, the world for a long time. You understand? For a long time. You know, he does it through false doctrine a lot. He does it by trying to take away from the word. He does it by changing the word. 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He does things by the Genesis. He does things by trying to change the word of God. That's the thing. You got to stick to the truth. The truth will set you free. Lies only lead to more lies. He said, be careful of the, the, the reading of the studying or the writing of many books so there's no end. There's no end. You know, I had a, a dream yesterday. Another dream. You understand? And I was putting books in a, on a bookshelf but then I look closely all the books on the bookshelf were the Bible every book was the Bible the Holy Bible maybe a different translation but the Bible huh. I'm just saying that was my dream I had a vocabulary I had a book said I had a bookcase with nothing but Bibles on it Bibles you understand? I'm not saying you can't have a dictionary. I'm not saying you can't have a thesaurus. But you got to be careful. When men write these books and they spread them to the masses, what do they do? Let me just explain this to you. All right. Okay, let's say I decided to write a book and it was supposed to be some way to help you along your Christian walk, right? And then I'll post some scripture and then I post my own opinion what is that doing what does the more majority of people who write these books do they write down scripture <laughs> to lead people in then they'll write some more stuff their personal opinion they'll write down what this person said their opinion and this and that you see how that kind of confuses folks but as long as the word in there people are like okay that's why you stick to the word. That's why you stick to the word. So you can't be confused. You understand? You teach the Bible. You understand? You teach the Bible. Jesus said, I mean the word, yeah, the word says, when this word is published in all tongues, Jesus will return. 
this word of God. That's the word that counts. You understand? All the rest of that, sometimes you got to get to a level when you're learning and you throw some of that stuff out the window. When you're cleaning the house, sometimes you got to throw some things out of the window, especially in regards to books. You understand? I'm very happy that God has never allowed me to buy a lot of books, to be a lover of books. You understand? I'm, I'm not really a book man, but I love the Bible. That's the only book I've put up, I put in my head, and I could never stop eating it. <laughs> I could never stop reading it. I could never stop eating these words. It's like when you eat that piece of cake that's so good, and you gotta have another slice. That's how the Bible is to me. And that's how the Bible is to most people. They gotta have it. They gotta eat it up. You gotta study it. You gotta try to live by it. It is what it is. You understand? Don't be like the Pharisees. You know, like, think about people who gather upon master degrees, doctorate degrees, all of these different degrees. Why? Why do they do this? They say it's to better themselves, but it's really about status. Look at all the awards I got. Look at all the awards I got. Look, I got a master's in this, I got a master's in that, and as far as people goes, don't know how to treat people at all. You understand? As far as book sense, they're pretty smart. But as far as how to treat people, they're pretty ignorant. You understand? And that's how the Pharisees were. They were pretty smart in reading the book of the word of God, knowing it, rememorizing, knowing what it says. But they were blind in regards to how to treat people. And it's a lot of Christians that are blind in regards to how to treat people. Forgiveness, helping one another, spreading the word, uplifting one another. You understand? Showing compassion on some. Despising the clothes on some. All this comes into play as you grow as a Christian. You understand? And Jesus was trying to get the people to understand this. He even told his disciples, some people are going to hear you and some people ain't. If they don't hear you, dust your feet off. You understand? Read the Bible. God can't push me to stress this enough. Read your Bible. If you can't read it, get with somebody who knows it or studies it. You understand? Like I said, before I became a Christian, I couldn't read the Bible. You understand? You know, I can go to church and be filled with the worship. You know, one thing about worship music, it does make you feel good. It does. But you know the truth makes you feel even better. I can put a fire beat on a song and make you feel good and talk about the wrong thing. You understand? You got churches now that play more music than read, than teach more script and teach less scripture. You understand? Did you hear what I said? Let's, let's repeat that again. You got churches these days that play more music and teach less scripture. It's like people are going to church just to dance and worship, not to learn. You understand? The Bible says draw closer to here rather than to get a sacrifice of fools that think by their many words. <laughs> Do you understand? He wants you to find a, a Bible-based church that's Bible-based. I don't think God has God has no problem with people worshiping Him. You understand? He has no problem with people worshiping Him. He wants people to worship Him. But He wants people to know His truth too. You understand? But people are going to churches that makes them feel good. And there are some churches out here that are just straight mean. It's another evangelical teacher that's like that online. I can't remember his name, but you got to think about this when the Bible says least of it. You got to teach both. You got to teach the compassionate side. 
You got to teach the wrath of God. You got to teach Genesis. You got to teach Revelations. You know, one thing about it. If you read a whole story, doesn't it make more sense? It makes more sense if you tell it all. If you tell portions, you could tell partial of a story and change a whole event. You understand? You can tell partial of a story and it's not going to be right. You know when uh, people go to court and they put their hand on the Bible, they say, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Really think about that. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That means don't leave nothing out and don't add nothing to it. Tell the whole truth. You understand? That's the only way the truth is going to get out. The truth can't get out by just saying John 3.16 and preaching on that every Sunday. You understand? Even just, let's say you just preach on the Ten Commandments. You got to give more to that. You understand? You got to tell a lot of, you got to tell all of it. If you really want somebody to understand something, you have to explain it all the way. And sometimes it takes time. Does it happen overnight? Let me pause for a second.